day does not go by that I don't think of him. And even if a day was gonna go by that perhaps I might, he makes sure that, I mean, I don't know what it is. It's just I can walk by a, a bookstore down the street and there's, there's Robert's picture. Or I, uh, it, it's, it's really uncanny how often I think of him or he's in my life, he's always there. I left the house when he was 16, so I was three. So there was no sort of brotherly relationship really there until um, I made an effort to go into the city and sort of get to know him. And then when I got out of school and I had taken photography, I'd studied photography, and I certainly had the basics of what was necessary to assist someone, he's like, let's give it a try. He's like, I don't know you, and just let's see how this works out. And um, it didn't take long for us to bond. and. A friendship way, I mean, in a brotherly way. Um, I think he was proud to have a family member um, that he could connect to, because um, he really didn't have that, and uh, we became friends. I think part of Robert's drive and for fame had to do with the friction that he probably had with Primarily my father, I'll say. Um, but yeah, he was driven to be known. Robert was always a late riser. So we would get in probably 10 o'clock in the morning and we may not hear from Robert until about one in the afternoon. This is on Bond Street I'm talking about. But when he did come, I mean, he was, uh, running a business. I mean, he was, had his side that he was definitely the boss. Um, he had that sort of aspect to him. Um, in the studio, fantastic. I mean, I learned so much from him in the studio. He was always looking for that um, perfect angle of the head, the perfect, um, spot where that flower hits the edge of the, the seamless paper. Um, the perfect beam of light that's falling onto someone's face. The perfect shadow. Do I have a favorite picture? Hmm. Self-portrait with a cigarette. It's just sort of New York cool and confident and speaks of the time. And he's my brother. Yeah.